Welcome to part two of the multi-part series covering best practices building Gen AI applications on AWS. In this part two video, you will learn how to select the right LLM starting from your business problem by going through this Jupyter notebook step by step. My name is Felix Hutmacher. I'm an AWS solution architect covering analytics and AI ML services. With thousands of LLMs out there and new ones coming out every day, it is difficult to figure out which one to pick. Evaluating LLMs is a complex task, and while we have benchmarks like Helm and Hugging Faces leaderboard, they only provide a general view of how a particular LLM would perform in some common NLP tasks. Most of the evaluation frameworks and approaches are still evolving and none of them cover everything. Therefore, figuring out which benchmark is the most relevant for your use case and to be mindful of the social aspects as well is a task by itself. And ultimately, you still need to evaluate LLMs against the data of your specific use case. This notebook attempts to provide a systematic approach for large language model evaluation, starting from a given business problem. So what is the business problem that this notebook covers? Let's assume we are a financial analyst who wants to use financial statements like balance sheets, income statements, operational reports, or annual reports to better understand the financial strength of a company to help assess risk and guide future investment decisions. And to do this efficiently, we need to extract information from these documents, which consist largely of unstructured text. So our use case is really information extraction. And as a sample document, we use Amazon's annual report in this notebook, for which we have a set of questions and answers that function as our crown truth dataset. But this approach can easily be adopted to other documents as well as an entire corpus of documents. In general, there are various options for you to choose from when implementing this pipeline and changing any of them can have a big impact on the overall result. In this notebook, we use Amazon Titan's embedding model and OpenSearch Serverless as a vector store, as they're both fully managed serverless AWS services. As orchestrator, we are using the Langchain library, which we leverage for text splitting and retrieving relevant chunks from our vector store. In addition to the model size and model type, there are other variables that impact the response of an LLM. And experimenting with different user prompts and templates can improve results significantly. And this alone can be its own topic. So for the purpose of this model evaluation, we just adjusted the prompts to the specifics of each LLM. Once you decided on which options you want to move forward with, you have to determine which evaluation methods and metrics you want to consider for your use case. For example, if your use case is text summarization, then you might want to look at a metric like Bleu or Rouge. But given that the focus of this notebook is on information extraction, we will focus on human review, Chakard and Cousine similarity, which compares the LLM responses to our crown truth data. And we will perform a qualitative assessment of the responses using Claude as a judge. And using another LLM to evaluate the responses is becoming a very popular approach. And while it's not without its own risks, it is a great way to augment and scale human evaluations. Step one is to understand the capabilities of the top performing open source and proprietary LLMs. There are quite a few things that you want to consider. For example, what does the licensing look like for the LLM or whether or not it is fine tunable and what data it was trained on. Also the number of parameters, the maximum context window length and the speed of the LLM are all important factors to review. 
And all of these dimensions will have an impact on the overall TCO of the solution and might exclude it from consideration for this use case altogether. For this use case, we identified the scenarios that best fit are between question answers Q&A and information extraction. And upon reviewing the Helm leaderboard, we identified Cohere command, uh, Lama 270B, and Anthropic models for further review. And for the purpose of this demo, we picked Cohere command, Lama 27B, and Anthropic Cloud V2, since Cohere and Anthropic are available on Amazon Bedrock, which provides the best in class LLMs with a fully managed serverless inference and a simple API, which makes it easy to build Gen AI applications with. We also used Lama 27B instead of the 70B version, since the 70B version does not support instruction fine tuning and 7B requires less compute and memory, therefore further reducing the cost. And these are very similar requirements you will encounter in the real world, where you need to make decisions between cost boundaries, the ability to customize, and not having to manage inference servers using serverless inference. Having done this, we now want to do a quick shortlisting using a subset of test prompts for the given task for a human inspection. And to keep this notebook digestible, we demonstrate this using our top three models, Claude V2, Cohere Command, and Llama2. And to run and compare these prompts quickly, we use Langchain's model laboratory class. And we use prompts like, what are the three main business units of the company? To assess as human evaluator the quality of the LLM's output in terms of relevance, fluency, coherence, and overall quality. So this approach really offers a subjective feedback on the model's performance. And just by doing a quick visual inspection, you can already gauge that Llama 2, which is the purple output here, is a bit chattier compared to Cohere Command's output based on the question, what are the three main business units of the company? Now, after doing the visual inspection, we want to evaluate these models more systematically. And how we can do this will vary slightly depending on your use case and what data is available to you. For our use case, we happen to have labeled ground truth data, which you can use for our test. Therefore, we can leverage classic ML metrics like accuracy to evaluate the performance of the different LLMs. But we will also look at similarity metrics like Jacquard and Cousine similarity. And human in the loop is also a very common technique, which we have touched on briefly during our visual inspection earlier. And finally, we will also use the LLM as a greater approach in our evaluation. After downloading our raw data, in our case, the Amazon annual report, we use Langchain's token text splitter to split the document into 189 chunks. And then we create a corresponding index with a KNN vector in OpenSearch serverless for our REC pipeline. And then we define our prompt templates. And you can see here that we have specific prompt templates for each of the LLMs. And then finally, we run all three of uh, our LLMs through our prompt catalog. Now that we have done that, we can start the evaluation where we use our prompt catalog with around 200 questions and answer pairs. And we can look at how these three LLMs perform from different dimensions. The first one we are using here is Jacquard similarity, which is a common proximity measurement used to compute the similarity between two items, like for example, two text documents. The index ranges from zero to one, and the closer it is to one, the closer it is to the ground truth answer. And 
here you can see a sample output. So here the score was 0 0.8. And if you do the average across our 200 questions, you can see that here Claude V2 is slightly ahead of Lama 27B with the highest average check our similarity score. The next one is cuisine similarity, which has a similar idea. The smaller the angle between the two vectors, the more similar they are to each other. And again, Green AK1 indicates that the LLM produced output is very similar to our ground truth answer. And red in this heat map indicates that the answer is not very similar to our crown truth data. And just by going through this visually, you can already see that Claude has slightly more green than Llama 2 and again is slightly ahead compared to the other two. And finally, the LLM crater approach where we use another LLM, in this case Claude, to assess the responses and determine whether or not the response is correct. And for this here, we use the QA eval chain class from Langchain, which makes it easy to do this at scale. And ultimately, we can look at each metric and dimension individually. But we can also use all three metrics to calculate overall accuracy. And we can see here that Claude overall performs slightly better than the other two. Everything we went through in this notebook so far focused on accuracy, but speed and cost are two other important dimensions for LLM evaluation as well. For this use case, speed is not of importance as it is not a real-time pipeline. But if it was, Amazon SageMaker Inference Recommender is a great tool for performance benchmarks to determine an inference endpoint that delivers the best performance at the lowest cost. Now, a word about cost. Amazon Bedrock provides LLMs as a service and offers a consumption-based pay-as-you-go pricing option as well as a provisioned throughput option which is similar to a compute-based pricing model. This is different from Amazon SageMaker. While Amazon SageMaker also has a serverless option with pay-as-you-go pricing, serverless SageMaker endpoints don't support GPUs or large instances uh, yet. And in this scenario here, we used Amazon Bedrock with the token-based, aka okay, consumption-based pricing model for Cohere Command and Claude V2. And while Llama 2 will be available via Amazon Bedrock shortly, Llama 27B in this test was hosted on a real-time SageMaker inference endpoint, making this slightly more expensive at a small volume. But at a bigger volume, this can change quickly. For example, if you assume 1 million documents, then Llama 27B on SageMaker is significantly more cost-effective than Command or Cloud on Bedrock. Therefore, which approach and model is more cost effective largely depends on the volume of documents for this use case. And given that our use case has a high document volume, Llama 27B wins in the cost category. And given that it performed reasonably well in terms of accuracy, this is the LLM that we will choose to move forward with given our success criteria. This concludes our model evaluation. We looked predominantly at accuracy, but also discussed speed and cost, which is crucial when you are evaluating your business case. And we will link this notebook in the description below to give you a blueprint on how to get started. And of course, there's a lot more that can be done in terms of the evaluation. And I included some thoughts here as well. Thank you for watching part two in this multi-part series and be on the lookout for part three, which covers how to improve the LLM performance.